Hello dear viewers, in today's video we are going to tell you about some amazing characters that some of the top artists and writers created before moving on up as they say. Let's go over the top 10 Top Cow comic characters. I'm Andrew LaPamardo, your narrator, and this is Marvelous Videos. Aside from Marvel and DC Comics, there were many production houses with brilliant illustrators and writers. Some of them later joined the big shots in the comic industry after serving for these smaller yet vibrant production houses. One such was Top Cow Productions, a partner studio of Image Comics. It was founded by Mark Silvestri in 1992 and had artists like Michael Turner and David Finch, who later worked for DC and Marvel. Top Cow Productions has given us brilliant comic book series like Cyberforce, Darkness, and smash hits like Witchblade. The storylines were so good that they had crossovers with DC and Marvel. Yes, you heard me right. And also, not once, but on many occasions. There were dozens of cool characters with badass looks and powers, which will surely get your eyes hooked on them for quite some time. So in today's video, we will discuss the top 10 Top Cow characters, with interesting backstories and scantilating powers. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you very much. Let's begin. Number 1. Jackie Estacado Jackie Estacado is a character from the Darkness comic series, and also the wielder of the darkness, which in the comics is an ancient malevolent entity destined to bring contempt for humanity. Appearing in the very first issue of the comic's first volume, Jackie was a contract killer born on October 29, 1981. Jackie's mother died shortly after giving birth to him, and he was recruited by the Mafia Don Frankie Franchetti at six. Despite being exposed to a life full of violence and negativity, Jackie had good moral values instilled in him by Butcher Joyce. He attained his maturity quite early, losing his virginity to a female officer at 14, and started enjoying a life of sex and violence. On the night of his 21st birthday, Jackie heard voices from the entity, the darkness asking him to be awakened and get whatever he wanted. Jackie accepted the offer and allowed darkness to manifest in him. Although this new power helped him run his profession smoothly, he soon started developing more enemies. He soon realized he could use this new power for good and decided to quit the mafia, which quickly brought him into a clash with his adoptive uncle, Don Frankie. Frankie kidnapped a childhood friend of Jackie named Jenny, killed her, and sent Jackie a videotape of it. Jackie soon seeks out a plan for revenge and calls out Frankie's entire mob to a warehouse that was spiked with gasoline. When the team and Frankie arrived, he managed to burn down the entire building, which burnt him alive as well. Jackie wandered in hell for two days, after which he was allowed to exit hell by Tom Judge, while the darkness constructed his entire body from the burnt remains, which was just his lower jaw. Being the host of the darkness, Jackie had unique powers like flight, healing, and night vision. He could summon a horde, or even an army of darklings, which he could control telepathically. With absolute strength and speed, he possessed the Darkness Armor, which could protect him from any blow and shapeshift to become lethal weapons at his beck and call. Even without the aid of the Darkness, Jackie was an excellent marksman and skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Number 2, Aphrodite 9 the next character on our list is the latest synthetic humanoid from the Aphrodite series, Aphrodite 9. She was a gorgeous girl in appearance and was meant to perform undercover operations of infiltration and assassination. Aphrodite 9 made her first appearance in Wizard, Tomb Raider, and Top Cow Universe Special Issue No. 1, published in 2000. Created by David Finch and David Wall, the character is an artificial killing machine whose synthetic brain can adapt itself like an organic human brain and does not need traditional programming. After every combat or mission, her brain is purged, leaving no memories of what happened or what she did. Eventually, she becomes aware that she is a weapon, and she hates it. She grows the test for her work and starts experiencing desires and dreams like a human. In her dreams, she saw glimpses of her past, where she was murdered many times without remorse. All these persuaded her to seek more answers. 
after which she discovered a matriarchal society of similar cyborgs whose objective was to overthrow the present government. They informed her that it was her destiny to be their leader, but she refused and left to lead her life on her own terms. She also discovers that her real name was April, which was given to her by her creator and adoptive father, Dr. Maine, whom she had previously killed. Being a cyborg, Aphrodite 9 possesses superhuman strength and endurance. She can resist 1.25 megatons worth of explosions without showing any damage and can freefall from skyscrapers at ease. Even if she does experience a fatal injury, her cybernetic enhancements can heal her quickly. She can shapeshift and change her appearance at her will. It is noted that she can release artificial pheromones, which can cause anyone to get attracted to her. She is an excellent martial artist and a skilled markswoman. Being a cyborg, she has a computer equivalent intellect and can scan opponents to learn about them. Her stealth tech can make her invisible and undetectable to most high-tech scanners. Number 3. Sarah Pezzini Next on our list is Sarah Pezzini, who was more like a traditional hero in tights and a cape. A version of her debuted in Psyblade slash She, Issue 1, Battle for Independence. This version of Sarah Pezzini was ultimately discarded and Sarah Pezzini was reanimated in Witchblade Issue 1, created by Mark Silvestri, Michael Turner, David Wall, and Brian Harberlin. Sarah was born in 1970 and grew up to be a homicide detective for the NYPD. Her father was also in the police department before getting shot and killed during duty, while her mother's name was not revealed. During that period, the Witchblade, a source of great power, was owned by a man named Kenneth Irons. Kenneth held an auction for the Witchblade to see who could bid for it and try to gain control over it. Sarah and her partner, Michael Lee, went to the auction as undercover cops, but Michael was captured and beaten badly. Just as Michael was about to get shot, Sarah jumped before him and got hit by the bullet. She was dying on the ground when the Witchblade decided to make her its new bearer, saving her from death and healing her back to normal. Sarah Pezzanine, before wielding the Witchblade, was an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant and a good detective. But with the powers of the Witchblade, her own powers and abilities are only restricted to her imagination. She possesses superhuman strength, enhanced vision, flight, energy blast, and quick healing abilities. She can cling onto walls and fly with the aid of wings provided by the powers of the Witchblade. She can create high-intensity energy blast and can even reanimate dead bodies. Number 4. Robert Beresford The next character on our list is a Native American descendant from the ancient Iroquois nation of North America called Robert Beresford, aka Ripclaw. Created by Mark Silvestri, Ripclaw made his first appearance in Cyberforce Issue 1, published in October 1992. Little is known about Robert's past except for the day he was born, which was the 1st of April, 1969 and that he is a member of the Cyber Force. During his teenage days, he started showing signs of mutations, which gave rise to an array of questions in his mind. He finally confronted his father and left home, hoping to get answers for his unusual traits and true identity. He eventually ended up on an Apache and got seriously injured after stumbling into a fight. The local shaman took him and explained to him about his past. He conducted a ceremony where Robert met the spirits of his ancestors and learned that his true name is Robert Bearclaw, not Robert Beresford. The spirits told him that he was not just a mere human being but a warrior whose destiny was to bring back the glory of the Indian people. Post-ceremony, the shaman marked him with his blood and war paint which symbolized the pain and truth of his spiritual identity. Robert was raised and trained by the shaman, and soon developed animalistic attributes, such as claws and teeth like a bear. His physical attributes were later modified by cyber data, removing his hands and replacing them with cybernetic enhancements. Robert's claws are the most dangerous weapons, which can transform into long ones as much as 12 inches. He possesses enhanced strength, durability, vision, hearing, and smell. In addition, he could enter the astral realm of his choice and had quick healing abilities. The cybernetic enhancements which cyber data provided become so much part of him that he can manipulate them to become claws just like his real hands. 
Apart from these, he could get psychic impressions from what he considered to be the spirits. Number 5. The Angelus Created by Mark Silvestri, David Wall, and Garth Ennis, the Angelus is a cosmic entity or a primal force that is equal to and opposite to the darkness. The Angelus and the Darkness together comprise the 13 artifacts mentioned in the Darkness comic series. Making its first appearance in the Darkness issue 2, Angelus is shown to be establishing a symbiotic relationship with its host, depriving it of any free will of its own. Although not much is known about the age of this cosmic entity, it is stated that the Angelus and the Darkness have been fighting and opposing each other since the beginning of time. Since it was a force of light and order, it sought to destroy anything dark and chaotic. However, for once, there was a truce between the two equal and opposite forces, and they gave birth to a child later, known as the Witchblade Artifact, representing the eternal balance between Angelus and Darkness. In modern times, when Jackie Estacado became the wielder of the Darkness entity, she found herself at odds with him. Jackie defeated Angelus and left it hostless for quite some time before bonding with Lauren Franchetti. The Angelus possesses godlike powers, even under darker conditions. She is ferocious as the bloodthirsty Kala, yet as beautiful as Morningstar. She has the power of holy light and can project powerful light beams from her hands or channel it through her weapons. She is immortal and impervious to mortal weapons. She can heal from any wound and also possesses the power of flight. Her pyrokinetic powers enable her to breathe and manipulate fire. With such catastrophic abilities, she also possesses superhuman strength, speed, stamina, and teleportation. Angela can use magic to summon or create servants to carry out her orders and communicate with her sentient beings via telepathy. Number 6. Velocity Karen Taylor, going by the name Velocity, is one of the main characters from the Cyber Force comic series. Created by Mark Silvestri, the character first appeared in Cyber Force Issue 1, published in October 1992. Like the other members of the Cyber Force, she was also cybernetically enhanced by Cyber Data, a global corporation with the objective of controlling the world. Velocity was the younger sister of Cassandra Lane, aka Ballistic. She had a rough childhood, living with her alcoholic and abusive father, who had left her mother and would often beat her up. One night, her stepfather was beating her mother when she managed to run to the nearest police station at superhuman speed, which was also the first time she experienced her powers. However, upon returning, she found out that her father had been killed during her absence by Cassandra. After that, Karen spent several years in an orphanage before being chosen by Mother May I to be a special hazardous operations cyborg, also abbreviated as SHOCK for cyber data. There, she was cybernetically enhanced and trained in combat. At 16, she managed to escape cyber data with the help of Cyberforce and eventually joined the team to bring down cyber data. After taking down cyber data, things were not solved as they were all infected by the doomsday virus and needed its cure. Velocity, going by the name, runs at a tremendously high speed, sustaining Mach 1. Although her upper limit is not yet known, she is believed to cross the speed of sound at ground level. Number 7. Ian Nottingham Ian Nottingham was a British and American descendant, and the only man who successfully wielded the Witchblade. Created by David Wall and Michael Turner, the character first appeared in Witchblade Issue 1, published in November 1995. He was formerly a captain of the Special Air Services for the MI5, but later made contact with Kenneth Irons and became an assassin for the Russian Mafia. Unlike Jackie Estacado, Ian was highly indebted to both Yakuza and the Kenneth Irons, and was even considered to be part of the Yakuza family. Despite holding a high rank in the Yakuza, he preferred being a freelancer, working for whoever he wished to. Ian volunteered for a super secret government testing under Project Odin, where his adult DNA was fused with some strange unknown element. Due to these enhancements, he could bond with the Witchblade, which gave him a wide array of powers. He, however, lost the Witchblade in a battle with Pazzini, which gave him serious injuries. He later acquired the Excalibur, which gave him a new set of powers and abilities. 
Ian could summon mystical powers, using which he siphoned powers from both the Witchblade and the Darkness. Along with this, Ian possessed superhuman strength with which he could catch bullets easily. He is an excellent close combat fighter owing to his years of training. He is shown even to oppose the Witchblade with his experience in superhuman strength. Amongst the notable weapons, Ian wielded the Blood Sword, which was one of the 13 artifacts. The sword could kill anything and also give him energy projections. The sword might be unparalleled and it was used to kill the immortal Angelus. Number 8, Heat Wave. The next character on our list is a cybernetically enhanced mutant who could absorb and release ambient solar energy from his body. Created by Mark Silvestri, Heatwave made his first comic book appearance in Cyberforce issue 1, published in October 1982. Heatwave, known as Dylan Cruz, had a tragic past. When his powers began to manifest, he could not control them, and he killed his own brother in an incident, which had a devastating effect on him and his family. He left home, joined a naval training school, and later became one of the most decorated soldiers in the SEAL team. He got married and had a daughter, but another tragedy took place before things could get better. His daughter was killed during a terrorist attack, which ruined his marriage and also his performance in the Navy. Following all these, he got seriously injured during a high-risk operation when the evil global corporation Cyberdata showed up. Cyberdata promised to build him an armor to control his powers, but instead cybernetically modified him and placed a brain box in his head to control him as shock for executing the purposes. Dylan's aggression began increasing drastically, which was noticed by Dr. Corbin, who managed to remove the brain box and show him the errors of his ways. Following this, he teamed up with Corbin along with Stryker and Cyblade and formed the Cyberforce. Dylan Cruz, aka Heatwave, could absorb and retain ambient solar energy, and after Cyberdata redesigned him, he could channel this energy to release a forced beam of superheated subatomic particles called plasma. This plasma could be used both as a weapon and as a means to obtain self propelled flight. Heatwave already had this power, but the suit and the cybernetic enhancements helped him get control over it. The plasma, if left unchecked, could harm others as well as consume his body, and the suit regulated this flaw of it. Number 9, Magdalena. Magdalena first appeared in Witchblade issue 62 and was the creation of Brian Halguin and Eric Basalandua. She was believed to be the wife of Jesus who gave birth to a daughter named Sarah. After this, the holy lineage of the Magdalena, a royal bloodline, kept passing with the sole intention of protecting the Catholic Church. Magdalena could see the human heart and guide people to change their wrong ways and redeem their sins. There is only one Magdalena in a generation who stood up against the world's evils. Since the Middle Ages, the Roman Catholic Church served as her employer whose duty was to raise her and prepare her to take hold of her destiny and purpose. Owing to the corruption of the Roman Catholic Church, Magdalena was either used as a pawn to the evil ambitions of the Cardinals or as an assassin to get rid of the enemies of the Church or supernatural entities whom the Church believed ungodly. Over the period of time, many Magdalenas were murdered by the Church itself after she realized how she had been used to serve the motives of the Church. Magdalena had the Spear of Destiny, which allowed her to manifest the Holy Light from her own Holy Blood. The Light forces her targets to experience their moral weaknesses, along with the pain and suffering they have inflicted upon others. The intensity of this depends upon the severity of their sins. The Light could drive someone crazy and even goad them to commit suicide. Out of the very few who survived the wrath of her Holy Light was Jackie Estacado, the Wielder of the Darkness as he was fully at peace with his nature and choices. Magdalena was a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant and an excellent swordsman. Her athletic physique, owing to her rigorous training, gave her an edge over her opponents. She was a skilled acrobat as well. Despite not having superhuman strength or speed or instant healing, Magdalena could run at 11 miles per hour, lift 200 pounds of weight, and heal efficiently all because of her intense training. Along with these, she had the capability of being a skilled markswoman and an efficient lockpicker. Number 10, Ballistic. 
Ballistic was born Cassandra Taylor and was the sister of Karen Taylor, aka Velocity. The character was created by Mark Silvestri and first appeared in Cyberforce issue 1. That night, when Karen discovered her powers and went to report their abusive father to the nearest police station, Cassandra killed their father by throwing a comb through his heart. She learned that she possessed super athleticism and hand-to-eye coordination powers and soon became a successful player on her high school baseball team. However, her ex-boyfriend grew jealous of her success and led a gang of boys to cripple her throwing arm. They attacked her and successfully executed their motives. Soon, Cassandra was approached by Cyberdata, who not only replaced her broken arm with their tech, but also brainwashed her using the brain box, finally transforming her into Ballistic. Ballistic became their weapon and soon the leader of Shock. Under her leadership, they fought Cyberforce on numerous occasions, until Cyberforce managed to remove her brain box. Upon removal, she got access to her memories and declined her service to Cyberdata. She did not join Cyberforce, but did help them on numerous occasions. Ballistic's skill set easily makes her one of the finest markswomen. Her aim is accurate, and she never seems to miss her targets. After being operated by Cyberdata, her enhanced bionic arm could throw objects to a much further distance with pinpoint accuracy. Ballistic was brilliant in hand-to-eye coordination and superhuman reflex. She was also well-trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, making her one of the best human cyborg weapons for Cyberdata. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.